I grew up with an abusive father. I, when I work out, I wear pants because I have scars all over my legs from when my dad used to push me and I would fall against tables and glass tables and I would cut myself. Um, I grew up, I'm Ukrainian background. So I grew up with a, you're a girl, you're not as smart. You're not as good as your brothers. Uh, you're not smart enough to do this. You're not good enough to do this. So I grew up with all my life with that mindset all my life. And I'll tell you a story what switched it because we all have a bad, a sad story. Let's face it. All of us have a sad story that we can always talk about. But the moment that changed for me, I'll never forget it. I was in grade 12 in high school. Now, when I went to high school, we had grade 13. It's called an OEC year. So if you were going to go to university, you had to go to grade 13. Otherwise, from grade 12, you just went to college. And I'll never forget it. I was in grade 12 going to go into grade 13. And my older brother, Mike, and I love him at pieces. We have a great relationship. He said to me, he goes, Elena, what are you going to do after high school? Sean Dustin spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. Upon release in 2006, he had nothing but the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and legal paperwork. In 2010, he kicked a longtime methamphetamine habit and started the long climb back up the ladder of life. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. If you want transparency and authenticity, you're in the right place. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and this is Sean Dustin. Hey, this is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Dustin. Thank you for stopping by. Ow, that kind of hurt my my uh, my elbows. A little bit sore still. So if you guys didn't know, I had surgery uh, probably last Thursday, so I've been kind of down for the count, missed a couple of uh, uh one of those interviews that I had lined up for Thursday. I don't know how I thought I was going to go have surgery at eight o'clock in the morning and then come back and do two interviews at six and seven. So, uh, that didn't work out for me. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, if you like what I'm doing and, uh, you're getting some value out of what I'm putting out here, do me a favor and, uh, go, uh, support what I'm doing either, you know, on, uh, on uh, YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, uh, in the corner there, thumbs the video up. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and hit that like and uh, share the video. If you're on the podcast platforms, absolutely important for you to subscribe because that makes me a little bit more visible on the platforms themselves. Uh, if you want to help uh, support monetarily, go down into uh, the the description and, or the show notes and there will be options there uh, where you can do that. My Patreon account is uh, up and going now, so there are there are like four or five different tiers that are really reasonably priced. And uh, you know, if you go over there and check those out, you can see all of the benefits that subscribers will have. Uh, and please, a lot of that has to do with the thing that I'm uh, the thing, the nonprofit that I'm I'm starting and or started and am and doing currently. So all that information is over in the, uh, at the Patreon. My guest this evening is Elena bomb and Elena is from Canada. And I ran across her through her, uh, business page on Facebook. I was, you know, searching around, looking through something and I stopped on her page and she caught my attention with, uh, mindset and self-sabotage because those are two things that I have trouble with or have had trouble with in the past. So I wanted to speak with her and bring her on the show so you guys could uh, hear a little bit about how to get through some of those issues. And I've talked to her quite a bit since we've we've met and uh, this is going to be a good interview and I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So let's bring Elena in. Hi, Elena. Hi, Sean. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. Thank you for having me on the show. This is my first podcast. So I do public speak, but this is my very first podcast. So thank you for having me. 
Well, thank you for coming and uh, being willing to come on the show and 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 talk to the listeners and and tell them your story. Uh, you're a holistic life coach and an entrepreneur, right? Yes, I do own my own business. I own a uh, ten thousand square foot fitness facility. I'm in Ontario, so I am Canadian. Um, but we're going to talk about sabotage and mindset as well. Now, this past year has been very difficult with COVID. So our year of COVID will actually be on March 17th. Now, out of this year, my business has been physically closed for five and a half months. Now, as a business owner, that's detrimental. But we're okay. We survived as a small business, but a lot of people haven't. So that goes in with the mindset and the sabotage we're going to talk about today. Because here's the thing, and I'm gonna, I'm a very blunt girl. So the listeners... I'm very blunt. I say things as is. I don't sugarcoat it, but you will learn so much from me in this hour. It's actually going to change your life. I guarantee you. So here's the thing. I grew up with an abusive father. I, when I work out, I wear pants because I have scars all over my legs from when my dad used to push me and I would fall against tables and glass tables and I would cut myself. Um, I grew up I'm Ukrainian background. So I grew up with a, you're a girl. You're not as smart. You're not as good as your brothers. Uh, you're not smart enough to do this. You're not good enough to do this. So I grew up with all my life with that mindset all my life. And I'll tell you a story. What switched it? Cause we all have a bad, a sad story. Let's face it. All of us have a sad story that we can always talk about. But the moment that changed for me, I'll never forget it. I was in grade 12 in high school. Now, when I went to high school, we had grade 13. It's called an OEC year. So if you were going to go to university, you had to go to grade 13. Otherwise, from grade 12, you just went to college. And I'll never forget it. I was in grade 12, going to go into grade 13. And my older brother, Mike, and I love him to pieces. We have a great relationship. He said to me, he goes, Elena, what are you going to do after high school? And I said to him, you know, I think I'm going to go to university. I'm going to try out university. And he said to me, he goes, no, you won't. And he goes, the reason why you're not going to go to university is because we're just not smart enough. Nobody ever went to university in our family. We're just not smart enough. We just, we don't do that. And because he said that, and he didn't say it to me to be malicious or mean, he was actually just stating a fact. Because you know what? He was absolutely right. None of our family members went to university. I was never in the honor roll, a high school or a regular school. I played sports and I worked. That's what I did. Academics, I had to work from them. If I passed, I was happy. But because Mike said that, something went off in my head and I basically said, screw you. I'm done with people telling me what I can and I can't do. Because I grew up with that with my father. And your father, your parents are your authority. You look up to them and you believe them. So at that moment, I was done. So you know what I did? I dropped science. I dropped math because I'm not smart in those two subjects. I took whatever courses to bump up my average and I got my ass to McMaster University. So I have a degree in sociology and I love sociology because it tells me why people act the way they do. Now, after university, I was going to go to law school. It's like, great. Awesome. I love to argue. I love to be center of attention. I want to be a lawyer. And I was ready to go to law school in Toronto. And then my mom got sick with cancer. So law school got put on hold. I stayed home and I took care of her. And she only lived six months with kidney cancer. She died at age 56. I was 25 when I lost my mom. And I don't know if you've seen death or not. Death's not a pretty thing. I held my mom's hand and I watched her take her last breath in a hospice. And it's not a pretty thing. So when you go through something like that, it changes you. So then you realize how much is your body and your health worth to you? Listen, I'm Ukrainian. I love my food. I love my steak. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll give up pizza, pasta any day over steak. I love my steak. I love my cookies. I like my salt and vinegar chips. So I'm not going to be preaching to the choir here saying you can't have any of this stuff because that's not my vibe. It's all about moderation. So my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, he said, well, I'm thinking about uh, buying a fitness facility. Help me run. And I went, all right. I knew nothing about fitness. I played sports. I played volleyball. I danced. I played soccer. I played hockey. That's it. I knew nothing about nutrition. To me, a portion of cookies is the whole row. It's not two <laughs> cookies. Who the hell has two cookies? Like seriously, this the guy. Row. there's four rows. Those are four portions. So I had to go back, get educated, got certified. 
And I started off as a fitness consultant. I'd tell people how to get in great shape, but then I realized there was something in their space. There was something in their space sabotaging them. And that's where I transitioned to being a holistic lifestyle coach because I wanted to figure out what were what was in people's spaces. Why weren't they moving forward in their lives? So as a holistic lifestyle coach, I don't care who you are. You could be a CEO of a, of a company. You could be the president of a company. You could be an athlete, you could be a stay-at-home mom, teacher, whatever. When you come see me, I deal with the last four doctors you'll ever need in your life. And they're the most important four doctors. Because here's the thing. You know what? We sabotage ourselves because we revert always back to our past patterns and behaviors. Even if those behaviors are toxic and those behaviors are toxic, we will always revert back to them because that's what our subconscious knows. That's what it knows you've done and you're used to it and you know the outcome. Even if it's completely bad for us, that's what the human mind will do. So you ever notice when life's great, it's great in a lot of areas in your life. It's great in your career, your finances, your relationships, your social life, your school life. And when it's shit, it's shit right down the line, isn't it? Because you're doing the exact same behaviors in every category of your life. Now, here's where people get lost. They try to control every category of their life. And that's the biggest mistake they do. So when I coach my clients, I said, just pick one category of your life. Just one. Own it. Work on it. Because every all the other categories, they'll follow suit. Because as you're in one area in your life, you're in all areas of your life. Does that make sense, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, it, it does. Awesome. And- so how do you gain control back in your life, especially with this COVID happening and basically everyone's lives have shut down. You know, I keep on hearing from clients and people, well, Elena, I can't start this because of COVID. Um, You know, COVID shut down my business or because, you know what? We've been living with COVID for a year. You can't use that excuse anymore. This is nothing new. If we were in March, 2020, sure. Whole new beginnings, but we're a year into it. So how are you going to get control of your life? We're going to go through these four doctors. And I guarantee you, if you just did one change in these four doctors, you'll be a completely different person in 30 days. I guarantee you. So what are these four doctors? So the four doctors are, and I get this from Paul Check. I love Paul Check. If you can ever listen to him, listen to him. Uh, Four doctors are Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement, Dr. Quiet, and Dr. Happiness. So we're going to go through these four today. Very important because here's the thing. In life, you can't control life. You can't control what's going on outside. You can't control the economy. You can't control this COVID. All you can control is you. You can't even control the people in your household, what they think, what they're going to do, how they're going to act, or what their plans are 365 days from now. Now, all you can control is you. And that's where these four doctors are going to come into. So Dr. Diet. Food. Food is important. Food is life. A lot of people have gained weight over COVID. I'm one of them because I got into the boxed wine and I got into my carbs a lot because we were thrown out of our schedules, out of our routines. And guess what? It's okay. I used to weigh 255 pounds after the birth of my first daughter. So I know what it's like to be a big person. And I know what it's like to be a skinny person and what that journey is. I understand the whole mental aspect of it. You know, I'll never forget being 255 pounds, waking up in the morning and just getting out of bed. My feet would hurt just to start walking. And then once you got going, you're fine. But I'll never forget that. So Dr. Diet, the three world's worst things to put in your diet is this number three, the world's worst things to put in your body. Number three is white bread. Mm. And guess what? Whole wheat bread, not that much better for you. So if you are going to have a bread, have a multi-grain bread. Okay. White bread is just, there's no nutritional value at all into it. The second world's worst thing to put in your body, dark pop, Coke, Diet Coke, Pepsi, Diet oh. Pepsi. If you are going to have a pop, because don't get me wrong, there's certain things when you eat certain things, you got to have a pop with it, like a burger or pizza. You just got to have a pop with it. They kind of go hand in hand. So if you are going to have a pop, have the lighter pop, ginger ale, seven up or Sprite. But if you can get rid of the dark pop, awesome. Now, listen, if you have it once in a while, who cares? It's your thing. 
But you know what pop does in the body? It especially if you're trying to gain mass, like gain muscle, it strips the water out of your muscle and fills it with bubbles. It's actually really gross. Mm. Now, the world's worst thing to put in your body, table sugar. So if you drink coffee or tea and there's sugar in it, start cutting it out. Now, don't go from a double-double to nothing because you'll just be miserable and irritable. <laughs> start cutting it out slowly. The world's worst thing. So when it comes to diet, what you put in is what your body um, gives out. Huge. Diet is 85% of anybody's weight loss success. So if, you, if somebody wants to lose 10 pounds, I would just like, cut out the sugar out of your diet or cut out the alcohol in your diet. Very important. Food is life. Food gives you your energy because at the end of this podcast, you're going to realize what you want to do with your lives and your passion, and you're going to need energy for it to do it. So that's where you got to click in your doctor diet. Get your doctor diet check. Does that make sense <laughs> for you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I already failed the test. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I, I eat, I eat I the white not, bread. I, <laughs> I am not here to say you can't have your bad food. Like, listen, I'm a mom. Do I feed my dogs craft dinner some days? Yeah. On days where they have extracurricular activities right after school and I don't have time to cook. Yeah, I do it. So I'm real. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be saying I'm like a mom that has everything organic and everything prepped. No, like I prep my food for the most parts, but do I have that bad stuff? Yes. We're all human and that's okay. Another thing with a uh, uh, diet is even if you don't want to lose weight, say that's not your goal. You want to alkaline your body as much as possible because cancer and diseases cannot grow in an alkaline body. They grow very quickly in an acidic body. So to know if you have an acidic body or not, grab a lemon, uh, cut a wedge of lemon out, bite into that lemon and suck on it. So if you go, oh my God, that was disgusting. You have an acidic body. You should be able to bite into that lemon, suck on it, go, yeah, Elena, this was sour, but I could eat it if you really wanted me to. It's like when you give a child a piece of lemon, they make that funny face, but they can actually eat it because their bodies are alkaline. Mm -hmm. So things that alkaline your body, Black coffee does. The minute you put something in your coffee, cream, milk, or sugar, it becomes acidic in the human body. Uh, green tea is very, very alkalining to the body as long as you don't put anything in it. And finally, uh, water, lemon water. Just throw a wedge of water, uh, lemon inside your water. That alkalines your body. So if your goal is not to lose weight, which is fine, alkaline the body because the statistics for cancer is one out of two people will get cancer. So with Sean, you and I on this podcast – one of us is going to get cancer. Now, my mom died of cancer and my dad was diagnosed with cancer. My dad actually passed away just last year uh, in a nursing home. But um, I have it in my family. So that's why Dr. Diet is really important. Now, the second doctor, Dr. Movement. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Movement is life. Movement is like get up and move. Don't get hung up on do I do cardio before weights? Do I do weights before cardio? Unless you're training for something very specific, who cares? Just get moving. And you don't even have to belong to a gym to get moving. Go for a walk. Just walk. Well, you live where it's nice and warm. Right now it's snowing where <laughs> I am. I would never go outside and walk right now. No, absolutely not. It's too cold. Um, just get up and movement because movement pumps energy throughout the body but also pumps the toxins out of your body. You know how many clients I get, they'll have one bowel movement once a week, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, Mm. your body's so toxic. Movement is life. Get up and move. Um, Dr. Quiet is the third doctor. Dr. Quiet, out of all the doctors, is actually the most important doctor. Dr. Quiet is your sleeping patterns. Your body only heals itself. When it's sleeping, your body actually only heals itself between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. That's it. Your body will heal heal itself physically between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And psychologically between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. So if you're the type that ever gets up in the middle of the night um, because your mind's racing of all the things you got to do, look at the clock. It will always be between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., Because that's a psychological healing time. So when you stay up till midnight watching a movie or watching a sport, a hockey game or whatever, you've missed two hours of prime healing time. Now, for my coffee drinkers, like, listen, I love my coffee, but I keep it for in the morning. And after 12 o'clock, noon hour, it goes right to decaf. I drink probably about five cups of coffee. That's my thing. 
I love my coffee, but it's black, so it's all good. Here's the thing. Don't drink coffee. Anything after 2 o'clock p.m., if you are going to have a coffee, change it to decaf. Because if you get a small coffee, for, like we have Tim Hortons here. I don't know if you have Tim Hortons where you are. It's a coffee shop. Um, I don't know what your coffee shops are where you are. It's a coffee Starbucks. Shop. Sure. It's like a Starbucks. Okay, let's go to Starbucks. Now, they don't call it small. They call it tall, right? So say you get a tall or a small uh, coffee at Starbucks, right? A small coffee has 300 milligrams of caffeine in it. Now, caffeine has a half lifespan of six hours. So say if you have a small Starbucks at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, you just put 300 milligrams of caffeine in your body. Now, fast forward six hours. Now it's nine o'clock at night. Now you still have 150 milligrams of caffeine in your bloodstream. Fast forward another six hours. Now it's two o'clock in the morning. You still have 75 milligrams of caffeine in your liver. And you wonder why people wake up in the middle of the night because their mind is racing. Mm -hmm. Anything I could give you a tip to make your your body stay asleep, that's that's where it'll heal itself. And that's where you will change as an individual. Your body needs sleep. And when it comes to your devices, like your cell phones, your laptops, your iPads, move them away from your body. I mean, your bed. Well, especially while you sleep, you want to be a better athlete. You want to do better in school or be sharper at work, but you don't want to work harder. And I tell this to all my athletes, move all the devices away from your bed when you're sleeping. I know Fitbits, um, they have that sleep tracker. Don't wear them. You're not, don't wear them. The electromagnetic <laughs> field disrupts your body. You're yeah. not getting a good night's sleep big time. Now, um, I know in Ontario, we're, we have something called the smart meter service where we get charged more money if we use our electricity or our water during prime time hours. Do you have that, Sean? Yeah, yeah I think they're all set up that way, all, all electrical companies. Okay, really important, especially for uh, my listeners that have kids and or especially teenagers. So if I do a load of laundry at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I get charged double because it's at two o'clock in the afternoon, as opposed to if I did it at seven 30 at night, you know how the company knows if I did a load of laundry at two o'clock in the afternoon, the satellite sends a signal to the meter at the side of my house every single minute. So that electromagnetic field is going around my house. Mm. Now for your listeners at home, this is a task for you. Whose bedroom is the closest to that meter at the side of that house, at the side of your house. Whose bedroom is it? Who sleeps the closest to it? Because I guarantee you, whosever bedroom that is, whoever sleeps in that bedroom, they have the worst sleep than any other family member, and they'll tend to get sick more throughout the year than any other family member. More headaches, more colds, more sniffles. Because whoever sleeps in that room is getting a brunt of that electromagnetic field. Mm. And here's the thing. You, sometimes you can't change bedrooms. It's not like you could say, okay, go sleep in the spare bedroom. There, you might not have a spare bedroom. So my advice to parents, if that is one of your child, one of your children's rooms, if they're studying for exams, don't study in that room. If you're sick with the flu or a cold, go sleep on the couch for that week or that few days. Don't sleep in that room because that room is getting the brunt of that electromagnetic field. Because as a holistic lifestyle coaches, I got to look at environmental factors of why what's happening to people. Because the clients that come to me are basically the clients are like, Elena, I can't think straight, straight. I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday. I can't make a decision for the life of me. I've gained 35 pounds this year, but my eating and my workouts haven't changed. I go to the doctor. My blood works fine. What's wrong with me? That's what I get. There's nothing wrong with you. You're born complete. You are complete. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just we've got caught up into our behaviors and our patterns. Does that make sense to you, Sean? Yeah, it's amazing that you you pointed that uh, that out with the uh, electrical thing. Uh, for me, it's it it comes down to uh, uh, sleep apnea, and that has everything to do with my weight. And that's part Absolutely. of the problem that they shoved that tube down my throat when I was getting the surgery because they when I, when I was out, they go, "Oh my God, he can't breathe," and so they shoved that that tube down my throat, which you know. 
I was like, all right, man, this after that surgery is really when I was sort of like thinking hard about, dude, I got to change my habits. I got to, I got to stop this. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's ridiculous uh, and, and frustrating and, and all of those things that I can control. Yes, you can. But <laughs> you just got to get to that point where it's like, Hey, enough's enough. You're not getting anything out of it. Now the final doctor is Dr. Happiness. And this is where we're going to really talk about mindset. Um, cause the other doctors, it's more of action taking, you know, you can go to bed earlier, you can cut out the sugar out of your diet, you can go for a walk, but doctor happiness is all about up here. You know, the average person has about 68,000 thoughts a day and 90% of them are negative. Mm. It's all about mindset. Now here's the thing. Um, we actually live in the greatest moment of time. We really do. Because whatever it is you want in your life, whether you want to learn how to lose weight, whether you want to learn how to earn a million dollars, increase your business, find love, have a happy relationship, whatever it is you want in your life right now, you could walk to any bookstore and you could probably find about 10 credible books written on the subject. They'll tell you exactly how to get it. Or you can search it on the Internet and you'll probably find about 100 blogs about somebody's journey and how they achieve that goal and their step-by-step action plan on how they achieve that goal. And you know what? They'll teach you how to get it. So my question to you is this, with all these resources literally at our fingertips, we have bookstores, we have the internet, we have our mastermind groups, we have our networking groups, we have our colleagues, our family, our friends, all these resources at our fingertips. Why don't you have what the hell you want in your life? Like, really, what's the excuse? And it comes down to is because you're not clear on actually what you want in your life because there's a fear there. You know, everyone's afraid of failure, but more people are afraid of success because they don't know what success looks like because they didn't grow up with it. They never had it. All they know is maybe poverty. All they know is how to be defeated or beaten on. So that's what they gravitate towards because they at least – they know what to expect in that yeah, yeah. environment. People don't know what success looks like. I don't know what it's like to have a million dollars. I can't imagine driving a nice car, living in a nice house, or having a happy relationship, or having somebody who loves me. I don't know what that's like. So there becomes a fear to it. So to ne- this podcast, we're going to change that. We're done with it. Because that's why it's not serving us anymore. So we're absolutely done with it. So my task to you, because I always give people tasks. Number one, you want to change your mindset. Be clear of what the hell you it is you want. What do you want for 2021? What do you want or what do you want to start? Because all you control is you. Forget about COVID. Forget about the economy. Forget about everything on the outside. Forget about what your kids or your spouse is going to do. They're their own individuals right now. We're talking about you. What do you want? And you guess what I always get? Elena, I don't know what the hell I want. <laughs> always get it. So this is what you got to do. You grab a piece of paper. Okay. You draw a big line in the middle of the piece of paper. You may not know what you want, but I guarantee you, you know what you don't want in your life. So on the right hand side of the paper, you're going to write everything you don't want in your life. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to be married to somebody I'm constantly fighting with. I don't want to be living in this basement apartment. Whatever it is you do not want in your life right now. Write it down. Okay. And I guarantee you to fill the page. Then on the opposite side of the page, you're going to write the opposite to what you don't want. So say, for instance, you wrote, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. Well, then you're going to have to figure out how much more a month do you need to earn to get you out of paycheck to paycheck status? Is it an extra $500 a month? Is it $1,000 a month? I don't know. I don't know your finances and your budgeting and your bills and your debt and your assets. You're going to have to figure that out. I don't want to live in this basement apartment. Okay. So where do you want to live? I want to live in a townhouse or I want to live in a detached house or I want to live in an apartment, my own apartment. So then when you get that list of everything now you want, pick your top three. I make my clients at the gym do this and they came here for a gym membership (laughs) because I guarantee you when I see, I don't, I, I, I want to lose 10 pounds. What the hell's 10 pounds? It's never about the 10 pounds, 10 pounds, cut out the sugar, cut out the alcohol. You'll lose 10 pounds. It comes down to the self-confidence. So everybody's 
who's listening, this is your task for 2021. What do you want? And pick top three things. And that's what you're going to focus on. Everything else doesn't get thrown away. We're just not going to tackle them this year. Because what happens is people create a to-do list. I want to write a book. I want to do uh, 10 speaking engagements. I want to work in a different department. They have so many to-dos, then they end up doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? The next year, you have the exact same to-dos, don't you? So yes, you pick three and that's it. The second part of this is... And this is where the game changer is when it comes to sabotaging a mindset. You have to stay in the now. What does that mean? Stay in the now. People who suffer from depression, they live in the past. People who suffer from anxiety live in the future. They're worried about tomorrow, three days from now, a week from now, a month from now. Heck, I had a client. She was worried about a family reunion. And she came to me and she was so distraught. She goes, Elena, I'm going to go see my family back at home in Europe. And my mother's going to criticize me. She's going to criticize the way I'm a, I'm a wife, the way I raise my children, the way I dress, the way I speak English and not our native tongue anymore. She's just, and she went on and on and on. And I said to her, I said, when's this family reunion? She goes, it's two years from now. I go, oh, it's two years from now. You're getting yourself worked up for something that's, Two years from now. And that's all she could think about. So people who suffer from anxiety live in the future. Nobody stays in the now. What's happening right now? You're just listening to me speak. That's it. Stay in the now. Forget about what you didn't get done today. And forget about what is on your to-do list for tomorrow, whether it's at home or at work. Forget about it. Stay in the now. Because when you stay in the now, it declutters the mind. And when you declutter your mind... That's when you actually see opportunities come your way. Because, you know, the universe actually throws you opportunities daily. It's just we get so caught up in the, in our lives, we don't see it. How many times do you say to yourself, oh, I should read that book. Or I should really call that person. Or that's a great podcast. I should really listen to that. But you don't do it. And then a year goes back and you're in the exact same spot. Your problem is 365 days from today, you don't want to be in the exact same spot. You want to be moving forward, whether it's COVID or not COVID. At this point, that's irrelevant because you can pivot. And that's a whole other topic that we can talk about. How do you pivot in times like this? So stay in the now, because when you stay in the now, guess what? Your mind doesn't can't sabotage you because you don't have time for sabotaging. You have no time to revert back to your old patterns and your old behaviors because you're staying in the now and you're focused on what's moving forward. Now, I had a, uh, a friend of mine. Um, likes her wine. I mean, let's face it. We all like our wine. Uh, <laughs> like honest, let's just be honest. We all like our wine. I like white wine, Pinot Grigio specifically. So anyways, she said to me, she goes, Elena, um, I think I'm drinking too much. And I said, really, how much are you drinking? And she goes, I'm almost at a bottle of wine a day. And I said, yeah, that could be potentially become a problem. And I said, why do you drink? She goes, I love it. I work hard all day. I go home. It calms me down. It relaxes me. Hey, I get that. Everybody's got their coping mechanism, but she goes, I'm getting concerned about it. I think it's going to become a problem. And I said, okay. I said, what time do you open up that bottle of wine? She goes, roughly around the seven o'clock PM mark. I said, good. That's when you're going to come see me at the gym at 7 PM. You don't break bad habits. You change behaviors. And the best way to change your behavior is throw distraction in place. So if you tend to overeat, well, what time of the day do you tend to binge overeat on all the junk food? Is it in the middle of the afternoon because you're starving because it's not supper yet and lunch was four hours ago? Or whatever your bad habit is, you know, the one toxic thing we all do, you know what it is. Figure it out. What time of day does it get initialized at? And then the best way to disturb it is change the behavior. If you have a dog, go walk your dog at that time. Anything to disrupt that schedule. Because the number one reason why people sabotage themselves, because again, they're reverting back to that old pattern, that old behavior, change the pattern up. When you change the pattern up, it disrupts the whole thing. It's really simple. People make this so difficult, but it's not. And change your words and your thoughts. You'll change your life. You know, I'll tell you a story. Uh, I got two little girls, uh, Sarah and Emily. Sarah's 11 years old and Emily's nine. Now, 
this one time, I think it was a few months ago, I took Sarah grocery shopping with me um, to the superstore, big grocery store. So anyways, now when Sarah comes grocery shopping with me, she likes to pick her school snacks and I let them pick out their school snacks, their Rice Krispie squares, their granola bars, whatever she wants for school snacks pick them out. Now, when Sarah comes shopping with me, she likes to carry her snacks. She doesn't like to put them in the buggy and she likes to carry them because these are her snacks. They're her (laughs) school snacks. So it's a sense of ownership. I get it, whatever. Right. So anyways, at this grocery store, of course, there's a toy section for kids and we always end up in it. How? I have no idea, but we always end up in the stupid section of the grocery store. So we're in this toy section and Sarah looks up at the top of the shelf and she goes, mommy, can I have that? It was like this little, little furry toy, like a fur baby. I don't even know. So I looked at it and it was like four bucks. I said, sure, grab the one you want. Cause they had different colors, but grab one for your sister. Cause you know, if one kid gets a toy and the other one doesn't, well, that's world war three in the house. Right? So I said, sure, grab one for you and grab one for Emily. So she goes to grab it, but now all the snacks are shifting in her arms. So she pulls back her arms to grab the snacks. And I said, Sarah, honey, put down the snacks in my buggy and you can grab what you want. And she's like, no, mommy, these are my snacks. I don't want to put them in your buggy. And then I thought to myself, oh, my God, isn't this what we do in our lives? We hang on to hang on to things. We hang on to shit. Whatever it is you want in your life, it's on that top shelf for you to grab. It's not out of reach because whatever you want in your life, guess what? Probably over a thousand people have already achieved it and already have it. It's nothing new. We're not reinventing the wheel on anything. So whatever it is you want in your life, it's on that top shelf for you to grab. But the reason why you're not grabbing it is because you're hanging on to shit, shit from the past. shit. And you know what? You're hanging on to stuff that's not even yours. Your stuff to hang on to. How many of you have a friend or a family member going through a divorce right now and you're worried about them? Oh, I wonder, I hope she doesn't get screwed out of the settlement. I hope the kids are okay. I don't know what he's going to do. Guess what? Not your monkeys, not your zoo. Love and support them. Not your monkeys, not your zoo. I love that saying. I say it all the time. Not my problem. You're hanging on to things that don't even belong to you. So, Part of this process I want you to do today is look at the things you're hanging on to you because how can you re- how can you grab success when you're afraid of failure? How can you receive love when you're hanging on to hate? I grew up with an abusive father. Listen, I know what that's like. I have scars on my legs to prove it and I I remember the words every word he used to say to me. But that doesn't mean every man is bad or every man's going to call me stupid or worthless or push me against a table. So whatever it is you want in your life, it's on that shelf. But what you're hanging on to you, it, what you're hanging on to is stopping you from grabbing that. So you really need to really look at what are you hanging on to? And that goes back to being clear. What do you want? Because guess what? None of us on this podcast, after this podcast, you don't have time to hang on the shit anymore because we got things to do. We got places to go, people to see. We have things to do. And remember, the pat your passion in your life you do for yourself, your purpose in life, you do for others. And that's much greater than you. So a dentist gives people beautiful smiles. Like look at you, Sean, with your story. And now you have this wonderful podcast. You would bring people and their stories. You're uniting people together. It's so easy for you to sit down and say, I'm a victim. It's not my fault. The system cheated me. You could do that. And you know what? You'd probably be justified. Right. You can blame your your upbringing. You can blame all the people around you. But at the end of the day, what are you going to do about it? Right. And people have to realize your story is a story. It's what are you going to do about it? And don't your stories never define who you are. Do we all screw up in our lives? Hundred percent. Yes, we do. Do Mm -hmm. we do shitty things in our life? Hundred percent. Yes, we do. So guess what? That doesn't mean you're a bad person. What are you going to do with it going forward? What do you acknowledge? You can sit down and be the victim and say, poor me, but that's not going to get you anywhere. This, mm-hmm. like this, The stuff I'm teaching you today is for people who are serious of changing and moving on with their life. If you want to stay as a victim, by all means, stay as a victim. I'm good with that. As long as you're good with that. It's your life. So why am I telling you all of this? Because you matter. 
Do you know the universe is a novelty creator? It never creates the same thing twice. Even if you look at two leopards, their spots will be different. Those shades of black, shades of brown, the sizes of the spots, they'll all be different. The universe is a novelty creator. There will never be another you in this world. And I think how sad, because I looked up the statistics today, almost 50,000 Americans committed suicide last year. And I think how sad, because there will never be another them in this world. There will never be another you with your, with your smile. There will never be another you with your eyes. There will never be another you with the way you see the beauty of this world or the way you formulate your opinions. And because there will never be another you, that means, guess what? You are good enough to whatever it is you want to achieve in your life. You are smart enough. You are brave enough. You are strong enough. Are you going to fail? Yeah, but failure is a lesson. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're not good enough. Look at the pop seven up. You know why it's called seven up? Because it originally was called one up and then it failed. Then he, the person changed the name to two up, three up, four up. And finally at seven up, it caught on and became successful. And that statistic actually still applies today. You have to try something a minimum of seven times before you actually see traction. And we give up after what? One time, Mm. one or two times we give up. That, you know, people, people's businesses fail, not because they were bad ideas. One, they fail because they grew, the business grew too quickly or they just didn't keep at it. So because the universe is novelty creator and there will never be another one of you, whatever it is, ladies and gentlemen, on that top shelf you want this year, my, my challenge to you is get it, go and grab it. And if you don't know, don't worry about the how, the how will always show up. Once you know what your what is and why you want it, the how will always show up. And don't say to me, I don't have enough money, Elena. I don't have enough time. Guess what? Those are resources. You'll find other people who have those resources and you'll use it for your benefit. So, yes. Is that exciting, Sean? Does that become clear? Do you have any questions for me for sabotage and mindset? You don't have time for sabotage. Yeah, I, that's great. That's an that's amazing presentation. I loved everything that you had to say and in everything that, you know, the different uh, analogies that you gave. Uh, it was amazing. I uh, love your energy. Uh, you know, I think the listeners love your energy, too. They've been chiming in. They've been chiming in here. And I've been flashing up the uh, the comments on the uh, on the screen. Uh, anybody have any questions out there? Feel free to. Uh, to go ahead and ask those, I'll put them up on the on the screen for everybody to see and for Elena to answer if you have any. Um, yeah, I, the, sabotage is is definitely something that I, I struggled with, and everything that you talked about is pretty spot on. Uh, you know, some of the things that I've learned so far in this journey of mine through podcasting and talking to all the different guests that I have is, uh, you know, what you think is the reality that you create. For yourself, you know, yeah. if you have bad, uh, bad thoughts, and like you're saying, if you, you know, you're, you're constantly thinking about, you know, that you're a bad person or, or things from your past. Like I knew that I, I would get caught up in, uh, in, in that myself, you know, of, I was one way in the past. And then I would say that that's what I am now, but that's not really what I am now. And, and no. it's where you just got to really figure out your words and, and how to um, kind of navigate that, that mm-hmm. mindset and, and the intention that you have behind whatever it is that you're doing. But think about it. You can influence a youth right now, a teenager that is on the wrong path right now with your experience. Cause your stories are by far more powerful than anything else. Somebody's life experience and you can change people's lives, but you see the, the universe doesn't give you anything you can't handle. Whatever has been thrown that whatever shit's been thrown in your life, it's been thrown there purposely because it knows you're strong enough. And I'm not getting all religious on you. It's not my thing, but whatever's been thrown at you, you've overcome. But now it's up to you to pass that along to somebody younger who's not who's struggling right now because that's what's going to get them through. See, we're all connected. When people think it's me, 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 oh, you have it so wrong. You have it mm-hmm. so wrong. We are all connected. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter who you are. Do you have your down days where your days you don't want to get off the couch? 
Absolutely. And guess what? When you're having those days, give yourself some grace. Take the day off. Forget about your meal plan. Forget about your workout plan. Forget about work if you're working from home. Just give yourself some grace and have that day off. But the next day, get moving. You can't stay there. You know, I'm all about taking your time off, but you can't stay there. Time to get up and get moving the next day. So you got to be compassionate with yourself and forgive yourself. And forgive Absolutely. this thing. I mean, the one of the most powerful, like I said, I grew up with an abusive father um, and I ended up taking care of him. Uh, he passed away last year, uh, not from COVID. Uh, he did pass away in a nursing home, but he's been in a nursing home for six years. I'd go visit him three times a week for six years. I never once told him I loved him. I didn't hug him. I didn't kiss him. To me, he didn't deserve that respect from just the way our relationship was. But I took care of him. I financially took care of him. I supported him. I visited him because you know why? At the end of the day, when that man died, my conscience is clear. Mm -hmm. I did Mm -hmm. everything I felt was important for me to do as a daughter. My conscience is clear. Now, do I love him? Of course I did. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing the stuff I did to him uh, for him. But I never told him because I just felt like he didn't deserve it. And I have no guilt about that. My conscience is clear. Remember, forgiveness is not about making enabling what the person or what, whoever hurts you making it right. That's not what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness is, is you letting it go. Finally, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Cause if you have that anger inside of you, you're letting somebody live rent free in your head. That's exactly yep. what anger is. You're letting that person live rent free and that person could be dead right now. So if there is somebody who is passed on and you didn't get a chance to have closure with them, Write a letter. Go, you know what? I forgive you for not being the father you should have been to me. I forgive you for not being the mother you should have been to me. And go through it of why you're angry. And then what you do with that letter, you burn it. You release it out in the university, universe and it's done. It's done. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. how you get some closure because we bring our past into our future. And that's where a lot of depression is stems from because people are living in their past. What's happened in your past is not happening to you right now. It's not happening right now, but we live as if it is. And we just yeah. gotta stop. Stop. It's uh, yeah, just stop. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> we got a question from uh, Elena here, and we got a couple other ones. I just, we're gonna go back to hers because I didn't want to uh, skip anybody. Sometimes when you're when you're working these comments <laughs> and, and you and you wait, it it it's not in sync with whatever it is we're talking about. So we got it requires energy and they don't deserve. You're absolutely right there, Kevin. Uh, Elena, is brown, is brown sugar bad for the body? Uh, it's better for you than white sugar. The best uh, sugar for you is a stevia sugar. But listen, if you're baking, brown sugar is fine. Much better. Uh, if it was a choice between white and brown, have your brown. Have brown. Yeah, I, I used stevia for a while. Like all the stuff that you sent me in the uh, uh, for the meal plans and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of that stuff in my in my cupboards. So, you know, I use the olive oil, I use coconut oil, I use all of that stuff from the base that I'd learned from keto. You know, because at one yeah. point I did lose thirty five pounds on the ketogenic diet, and you know, you saw some pictures of me on Instagram when I started my journey. Uh, but you know, I, I'm I'm one of those guys that. Uh, I don't know what, I don't even know what the name for it is. It's, you know, I'll get to a certain point and then it's like, okay, I feel great. And it's like, all right, well now I can, uh, slide a little bit. And yeah. then that's, that's that little slide turns into a, to a long, a long leap. I know. I get it. <laughs> it's, it's a struggle. I get it. But you, so when it comes to your eating, I always tell clients, um, be 80% great. So for me personally, I'll eat great from Monday to Friday at two, and then it becomes a shit show. I'll be honest, it really does. It becomes Miss Vicky salt and vinegar chips, and I'll have a ginger ale um, at night because we'll watch a movie on Netflix or something. Uh, Saturday morning will be bacon and eggs. I love my protein, mm-hmm. carbs, whatever. Like I said, I love my steak. I'm Ukrainian, like yeah, so. Yeah. I would never order a salad at a restaurant. I am not paying nineteen ninety nine for rabbit food. And <laughs> all the time people do, and I get it. Some people love their salads, and if you love love your salads, you're probably an A or B blood type because A and Bs love their salads. We're O blood types; they love their meat. 
Give me the prime rib. Give me the steak. Give me the meat any day. So I love those Brazilian restaurants where they keep on putting meat on your plate. Do you have them around you? Uh, I've heard a lot about them. I haven't (laughs) tried one yet. And you get this little uh, coaster, right? One side's green, the other side's red. If it's green up, they just keep on coming to your table and putting different meats on your plate. And then when you're finally full, you flip it over and then they stop coming to you. So that Mm -hmm. date right there. (laughs) Yeah, I need to try. I need to try one of those. There's one that they, uh, I think there's two of them in, in, you know, a couple cities away from me that are really popular. So once things get back to normal again, uh, well, as normal as they can get, I guess. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try that. You know, the one thing that I do, lo- I love about what you're talking about and, and what you, um, you know, you present and you work in and weave into your presentation is the universe. Cause I'm a big believer in the universe. I have a hard time with, with, with religion and, and calling it God and, and all of that. Uh, uh, the universe works really well for me. And it, it kind of allows me to wrap my head around, you know, something that's bigger than me because, you know, the universe is bigger than all of us yep. and energy because we're all energy. Absolutely. You ever, right? um, like if you're religious, you're religious, whether you're Catholic, Judas, Islam, I don't really care. It's yeah. your belief. Uh, I'm more spiritual than religious. Um, you ever been in, in a situation where you didn't know how you were going to pay your mortgage or your rent, you just needed money for something. And you were like, fuck, I have no idea. I have no idea where I'm going to get this money from. And then it just shows up. Doesn't it mm-hmm. just shows mm-hmm. up? Doesn't it something goes through or somebody paid you a back, uh, an invoice that was outstanding or, you know, it shows up. Doesn't it? Remember, yeah. The universe always has your back. But here's another thing that's really important. And so we're diving a little deeper here. The universe will always test you as well. So what do I mean by that? So for instance, a lot of my years here at the club, I was personal training and I still only personal train about two or three clients. That's it. Actually, I'll be here tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. for one of those clients. Um, so for a lot, the longest time I was personal training, like stupid hours throughout the day. And I finally said, I don't want to do that anymore because I hate the hours. I'm missing time with my kids at home. I'm here in the evenings. I hate it. So this is what I want to do now. I want to do more of the holistic lifestyle coaching. And so this is what the universe will do. The universe will test you. So the universe will be like, okay, Elena, I'm understanding you want to be a holistic lifestyle coach and you want to do more public speak engagements, but you don't want to do personal training. Let's test that. So what does the universe does? The universe sends me a client that wants to spend $15,000 of personal training, but will only train with me. Now that's a test. Do I take the money? Because 15000 is $15,000 for the business, isn't it? And mm-hmm. say, okay. Or do you say no and walk away? Now, here's the thing. If I say yes to that individual, then you know what that tells the universe? Oh, Elena. You don't want to be a holistic lifestyle coach. You still want to personal train. So I'm going to feed you more of this because you just took it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't forget the power of your no, because every time you say no, another door has to open to a yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So don't get caught up in that. So really don't, don't leave from what you want. Be very clear of what you want for 2021 and stick with it. Are you going to make adjustments? Of course, nothing's as carved in stone, but yeah, be careful. The universe will always test you and then it'll always give you what you want. Yeah, I've experienced that quite a bit. Uh, you know, I've never, I've never been homeless. Thank God. I mean, I've been on couches. I've, you know, done other stuff, but, uh, you know, homelessness has never been something that crossed my path, but Every time when I was almost to the end of like, what am I going to do or how am I going to go? Or what, you know, my unemployment ran out and I've got, you know, a week until my, my money's going to be gone and, you know, a job will appear or something will happen. You know, I've always been taken care of in that way. And and I tell that to people sometimes, like some, like my my girlfriend, she's, she would go like, well, you're not worried. And I'm like, "Eh, you know what, man? Some somehow something always takes care of me, so I don't really stress yeah. on it. 
doesn't mean you can be lazy and not do anything. Well, yeah, right? I mean, it's, yeah, you don't, I mean, you have to be a part of the equation, yes. of course. Yes. Um, but it, it, you know, it, it's definitely interesting how that works. So we are sitting at about 50 minutes here, 53 minutes. Ooh. Why don't we go ahead and uh, shift over to the offering for the female listeners that we have out there with uh, your special that you've offered for them? Yeah. So what I have is, so we're, it's March 1st. Perfect time. If you're wanting to lose uh, some weight for summer, it's coming up summer, right now is the time to get in shape. You don't, lose weight in the summer. Come on, let's be realistic. Your goal for summer is to maintain because it's the patios. Well, hopefully all this is open. The patios, it's the barbecues, it's the drinking. Let's face it. We all do it in summer. Summer is a time to enjoy. So if there's weight you want to lose, now is the time because we're actually about four months away from summer, three months away from spring. So what I have offering is actually for my fe- the female listeners, but don't worry if you're a guy and you want a meal plan too, just send me an email and I'll uh, hook you up. So for the females, this program's called the little black dress. It's cute. It's sexy. It's a 28 day meal plan. I love idiot proof. That's how I work. Tell me what to do, how to do it. And I'll do it. Um, that's the way I work, the, the way I, I best work at. And that's the way I've designed this program. I will tell you exactly what you're eating every single day. And also there's a grocery list. So on that list, you're going to take it to the grocery store and you already know exactly what you need for that week. Now there's also a swap list. So if there's something on the meal plan, you don't like swap it out to what you like. So it's idiot proof. It's 28 days to get you kickstarted. And I always say anybody who follows a meal plan, please, please, please give yourself a cheat meal. So psychologically, that does a hundred different things to you when you give yourself a cheat meal. Number one, on a Monday, plan out when you're going to have that cheat meal in that week. Is it Friday night because you're going to go on a date with your spouse or partner? Is it Saturday night because you're going to watch some game, a uh, hockey game on TV? Like I'm Canadian. We watch hockey. <laughs> <laughs> hockey's big for us. Uh, you're going to watch a hockey game. So you want your pizza, your wings and your beer. Well, then that's when you're going to have it. When you plan your cheat meal at the beginning of the week, psychologically, it already sets you up to be good because you have something to look forward to. And then physically, when you give your body a cheat meal, not a cheat day, it's one meal. So if you want your McDonald's, Big Mac, burger and fries and pop, go ahead, have it. That could be your cheat meal. What it does for you physically, your body doesn't think you're depriving it. So it's a trick for the body. It's like, oh, okay, I got normal food, normal bad food in my system. Okay, I don't have to store anything as fat because I'm not being deprived. So it does a tenfold psychologically and physically. Always give yourself a cheat meal and plan it. So for me this week, it's Wednesday night. I'm going out for dinner. Restaurants just opened up uh, two weeks ago. I'm heading out for a steak dinner uh, this Wednesday night. So that's my cheat meal. And then for the rest of the week, I know I got to be good on my meal plan. So that's awesome. what the little black dress is. And it's on special for $47. And that's Canadian. So if you're American, that's even cheaper for you uh, when you convert <laughs> it. And regularly, it's $149 because it's very detailed. Yeah. And I, and I picked up one of those as well. And it is detailed. It's got a lot of good information on there. And it is idiot proof because I am the same way. I'm like, Dude, just, just tell me what to do, man. I don't want to have to think about it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like you... Okay, I'm really going to show you how much of a blonde I am. Like, my husband can't say to me, Elena, I want you to drive. Now, we say kilometers. I know where you guys say miles. Elena, drive five kilometers south of here. Which way south? Which, how far is five kilometers? I have no idea. Like, when I get off the highway, am I turning right or left? Don't tell me north or south or east or west. Is it right or is it left? That's it. Idiot proof. Right. Things don't have to be difficult. Yeah, I don't. We we tend to make things more difficult than they need to be, though. Oh, right? why? Why do we do that to ourselves? Just have to know. ourselves. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably fits into there somewhere. So yeah, I mean, if you're if you're enjoying everything and and you want to you know hook up with Elena outside of the show, uh, all of her information and direct links will be available in the show notes or the description of this video, which is on the top of the video, not the bottom. If you're on if you're watching it on uh, YouTube, it's on the bottom of the video. Uh, if you're getting anything out of what I'm doing and you want to help support what I'm doing here, uh, head over to Patreon. Like I said, I got I got four or five different levels there. They're very cheap from a dollar to ten dollars. Mm-hmm. And they uh, you know, it's a monthly subscription. If you're on a three dollar plan, you actually get first uh, all of my queue that is not available yet in been published will be available there 
first for the three dollar listeners. If you are on the five, you actually get to be on one of these live streams with me as well once a month and talk about whatever it is that you want. Uh, you know, if you have issues, you have questions, you want to tell me about different guests that you want to have on. And if you hit the ten dollar one, you'll actually be able to pitch your services or or uh, uh, products for 10 to 15 minutes uh, and then answer questions from the audience. So, I mean, $10 for promoting your stuff a month isn't a bad deal. So a lot, a lot there for you to uh, get involved in over on the Patreon, uh, or you can just continue watching and doing what you do or, or, you know, enjoying what I'm doing here, uh, you know, but at the very least, subscribe rate or review if you're on uh if you're on itunes do me a favor man review what i'm doing and give the show a a, a rating that really helps in, in feedback for me as well uh any last things that you want to say before we head out of here helena you know i just want people to realize all you can control in your life is you so start working on you be nice to yourself and pay attention to the thoughts you say to yourself in your head. Because I, I, I guarantee you if a friend called you half of the things you call yourself in your head, you wouldn't be friends with them. Give yourself grace and know whatever it is you want, you can achieve it. You are good enough. And listen, you don't have to be a PhD student. You don't have to be smart academically. Like I'm living proof of it. I mean, just be real, be you, because nothing and nobody can ever take that away. Forget about what's happening out there. Be safe, 100%. Don't be stupid. But don't put yourself on the back burner, because I guarantee you, at least 95% of the listeners today have put themselves on the back burner and have been taking care of some everybody else, but not themselves. But guess what? 2021, if COVID hasn't taught you this, is to put yourself first. And then everything else becomes a ripple effect because you can do it. If I did it, I can be a business owner. Anybody can do whatever it is, what they want to do. It's great advice. Yeah, that's great advice. It is really great advice. And uh, like I said, I really enjoyed having you on the show. You definitely brought some value. You kicked ass. Oh, thanks. and, uh, you know, I, I think everybody's going to enjoy this and, uh, thank you everybody that is watching and participated. I really appreciate it. It makes the, it makes for a, a better show when we get audience participation, comments and questions and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So we got one more comment here before we shoot out and it is uh, Cheryl Kelly Lee. Love yourself first. Absolutely. Cheryl Kerry, Kelly or Cheryl, you are 100% right. Yes, absolutely. Cheryl. Because nobody will love you the way you should love yourself. Absolutely. Truth. That is truth. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to head out of here, uh, hang out for a second, and uh, I'll talk to you in the green room or backstage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in this virtual virtual broadcast studio of mine here. Um You know, uh, what we got coming up this week, uh, uh, our next show is going to be on Wednesday. It's with a author. His name is Jordan Barnes. Uh, All of that information, I'll have that scheduled probably uh, tomorrow. And it'll have, you know, what what his book is and everything else at 6 p.m. PST uh, Pacific time on Wednesday. That's going to be a great one. It'll be about addiction and his struggle from uh, addiction and back to, you know, where he is in his life. And like I said, I appreciate everything and all of you for the support and for just being great people and supporting what I do. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. Sean is a single dad, a union blue collar guy, and he spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. When he was released from prison in 2006, all he had was the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and some paperwork. Since then, he's turned his life around and shares the struggles and successes on this podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope you were moved to connect to the show. Book a guest spot. For merch, Patreon, PayPal, and social media links, go to linktr.ee slash nowhere to go but up. On Instagram at nowhere to go but up now. On Twitter at but up now. On the YouTube channel at nowhere to go but up podcast. 
see you next time.